welcome back to my channel and this is a sound off on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Okay, y'all. So it's Gemini season. It's my birthday week. I'm really excited. Um, I just feel real good. You know, I had I got to have some family time this weekend, and I really needed that because I just feel like I just I'm feeling brand new. Like rip me out the plastic, y'all. <laughs> I'm happy to bring some good energy to y'all. Okay. Hope y'all feel good too. Anyways, let's get into these Atlanta girls, okay? Chow, the episode starts off with, we just gonna start, let's start with Marlo. <laughs> okay, so this scene with Marlo and her friends, um, it really irritated me. It really got on my nerves. Um, <laughs> it did, like she's mad that Drew did not use the word shooting when she was addressing Candy's incident. And it's like, that's where you messed up, Marlo. You can't dictate to someone what verbiage to use. You just you just cannot. You cannot. If you had a problem with Candy, you should have addressed Candy. You wanting Drew to address her and read your mind. Like, girl, stop it. Like, stop it. I agree that Candy could have sent a flower arrangement and a card. That's nothing for somebody like Candy. Like, she could have done that. She could have got her assistant to do it, but her mind did not think to do that because you and her friendship is, y'all not there. Like, if you were a closer friend to her, she probably would have done that for you. But clearly she doesn't see you in that way. The fact that you've known her for 20 something years, doesn't matter to Candy. She doesn't see you in that way. So that's why it didn't occur to her to send you a flower arrangement or a card. Y'all friendship ain't on that level. I don't know how you want her to explain it to you. Y'all friendship ain't on that level. I remember some time ago, Marlo, I thought it was Marlo's brother. I don't know if it was the same nephew or, I really remember Marlo saying her brother died. And Nene, I think, paid for the food. And I remember her thanking Nene for this. And... Yeah, you and Nene were like sisters at one point. Like, y'all hung out. Y'all spent time at each other's homes. Y'all were real friends off camera. Clearly, Candy isn't your real friend off camera. Y'all have a surface co-worker relationship. The fact that you've known her for many years, it is what it, it doesn't matter. Y'all aren't friends on that level. What you don't understand about that, Marlo... I really wish in that moment that Marlo's friends would have kept it real with her and say, girl, yes, you've known Candy for many years, but the two of you aren't friends on that level. If she saw you as a close friend, she would have definitely sent flowers. She would have called. She would have done all those things if she felt that connection to you. You should have said something to her a long time ago and you chose not to. And I bet any dollar amount of money that the reason you never said anything to Candy is very similar to the reason why Drew did not use the word shooting. You didn't want to upset Candy. You felt like you were somewhat in her good graces and you didn't want to piss her off. That's the reason why you never brought it up to her. And you bringing it up now is just being a nuisance. Nobody is, ain't nobody feeling you, girl. You should have brought it up. Back in the day, you didn't. And then you still could have brought it up now and you chose not to. You were trying to get Drew to confront her. Girl, you look crazy. You need to wrap this storyline on up ASAP. That's what you need to do. And I wish your friends would have told you that. Anyways, over at Sonia's house, her sister is still salty because Ross wants them to leave. And it's like... Did y'all ever think that maybe Ross doesn't like the way that your family talks to you sometimes in y'all house? That might be one of the reasons he wants them to leave. I don't too much appreciate how Shezzy talks to, to Sonya. It's, 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 it, I don't know. It's something about it just don't sit right with me. I don't really like it. I, I don't know. I don't know. She always seems to be irritated at all times. Every time you seem irritated. And I don't feel like this is fake. I feel like that's how she really feels. I don't know. 
You wanted to leave. And then she says, yeah, girl, because my husband wants y'all to leave too. And now you got an attitude about it. So you can sit there and throw shots at her and talk about how you tired of doing stuff for her and you tired of being in her house and da 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 da. And then she's like, well, yeah, girl, my man, ready for y'all to leave too. And it's a problem. I'm struggling to understand why it is you came to Atlanta to live in your sister's house to begin with. Uprooting everything and moving to go live into someone else's house, that's not an easy thing. It's like you're starting life all over. What made you agree to that? Did you feel like you were going to come to Atlanta and they were going to give you a friend of role on the show? Like, what prompted you to say, okay, yes, this is the move? It's time to send everybody on their way, Sonya. Hire a nanny, do what you got to do, figure it out. But this little situation right here, this is about to be ugly for you if you don't wrap it up real quick. Because we all know that if Ross's mom or Ross's family wanted to move into your house, you would have a whole problem with that. Because I watched y'all on the show. And I know his mama, didn't, you and his mama, y'all was kind of bumping heads a little bit. You wouldn't want his mama in your house. You wouldn't. I guarantee you the way that Shezzy talks to Sanya is one of the reasons why Ross is ready for them to leave. I'm y'all saw how he went off on, on Sheree and Kenya at that um dinner. I just have a little bit of a feeling that that might be part of the problem. But anyway. Okay, so Kenya's opening a Kenya Moore hair care spa salon. Did she talk about this already? Did I miss this? Because I feel like this is the first time I'm hearing of it. But anyways, kudos to her. It looks like it's going to be really nice. And Kenya's really... Kenya. <laughs> Kenya. When you done putting your salon spa together, girl, you need to take your ass on over to Potomac and help your girl out. Because you really seem to have a good eye for these things. Like, you're really good at this. You really are good at this. My friend, Doctor, he said that Kenny and Sheree should have a spinoff redoing people's homes. And I'm all the way here for it because, Kenya, this might be your next move. This might be something you can add to the empire. Bravo. Y'all need new shows. Y'all need other shows besides just Housewives. Y'all might want to think about this. Now, when Kenya was telling her homegirl about the friend group and the dynamic and how Marlo be acting and how Marlo was going around slashing people's faces. See, first of all, I know we're not supposed to be breaking the fourth wall, but girl, for you to sit up there and act like you don't know about Marlo and her storyline on this show and how, girl, you don't watch the show? You don't know about Marlo? Girl, bye. I'm at the point where I really hope at this reunion that Marlo addresses exactly what happened with this lady. I know that she probably can't say everything that happened, but I want her to address this. Like, you tired of them using this against you? You need to address it once and for all. Because I'm under the impression that Marlo got into one fight and slashed this woman's face. Kenya has now said that she slashed all those people's faces. I know everybody hate Marlo right now, but I don't think that that's fair. If she only, if this was a one-time thing that happened between her and one person, it's irresponsible to go around and say she did this to several people. That's not cool. That's not cool. Um... Kenya, girl, you know I'm trying to like you, Kenya. I'm trying to like you. But I'm not going to sit up here and act like when you're doing some shit that's wrong that you ain't doing some shit that's wrong. Don't go around saying all of that if you don't know that to be the gospel truth. If you don't know that to be true, don't say it. Because I really was under the impression that it was one person. And if she only went to jail for six months, that right there tells you that... I don't know if I believe that Marlo just jumped out the car and started slicing people. Like, there's more to the story. And I don't want a victim blame, but there's more to the story. And I really just need Marlo to address this one for, once and for all. I just really need Marlo to address this so we can know what we're talking about when we're talking. That's all I'm saying. So Sheree has a little scene at home with 
Callie and Cairo stopping by with her grandbaby. And her little granddaughter is just the cutest thing ever. She's so adorable. And you could tell Sheree's in love, okay? And I like to see this side of Sheree. Because I kind of feel like we don't really get to see the mama. Like, we know she's our mom. We don't but really we don't... get to see the warm, tingly side of Sheree. You know, the warm, fuzzy side. We get to see the who gonna check me, boo. And, you know, I like to see this other side of Sheree. Like... She was holding that baby. It was just, it was so beautiful. Anyway, Sheree is explaining how, you know, when she first found out that, you know, baby girl was on her way, she didn't really think that Kaiwa was ready, but he has just really stepped up to the plate. He is being a great father. He wakes up for the 3 a.m. feedings and the changing of the diapers, and he's a good dad, Savannah. A okay. good man. Okay, and she's really proud and she gets so emotional talking about it. That's because in all three of her pregnancies, she did not experience a partner who was so hands-on like her son is. And she gets really emotional. And I'm just like, oh, Sheree. I think y'all can say what y'all want about Sheree. Y'all can call Sheree every cheap. She don't pay people. She's selfish. She's this, but she held her kids down. She did her thing as a mom. She made sure all three of her kids got through college. She definitely did her thing as a mom. That's one thing nobody can take from her. So for her to see the fruits of her labor, that's a beautiful thing because everybody doesn't get that opportunity in life. Now, y'all know I don't really see it from Miss Drew, but when she was talking to Ralph about this whole Marlo and Candy situation, she was making some points. She was making some points. She had me up until she said that she was about to beat Marlo's ass. And then that's when I woke up and I was like, this is Drew, girl. This is Drew. You can't expect too much out of her. Because, girl, you know, who asked you going to beat? <laughs> who asked are you going to beat? Absolutely no one. Please, girl, sit down. Anyways, we make it over to Courtney's event. And side note, that looked really fun. That's the type of stuff I'm into right there. I got to check that out. I don't know if y'all got one in Houston, but or... You know, I, I, I'm going to have to figure something out because that like that's the type of stuff I like to do right there, okay? Um, <laughs> but before they got to the activities, um, Candy comes in on 10, okay? She didn't hear from Kenya. She didn't hear from Drew. What Marlo has been saying, you know, basically attaching her nephew's death to the incident that happened with Candy's cousin slash godson and Candy ain't having none of that. And I don't mean... I can't blame Candy for being upset. I really can't. And I'm pretty sure, you know, you know, when people are bringing it back to you, it makes you even more upset because it's like, what the fuck is Marlo on? So, you know... It, okay, so now when Candy, Marlo, and Drew go off to the side to have their little conversation, right? Um... Can I just say, I'm watching the episode a lot later than the rest of you. It's Thursday that I'm watching it. And so, I've seen all the comments, that everybody's reactions to the episode. And I really thought that I was going to come on here and drag Marlo for Phil. The way some of you guys made it seem like Marlo ran up on Candy and was giving her the worst energy... I really thought I was going to have to come on here and drag Marlo. And Marlo is going to get a little bit of a dragging. But y'all really made it seem like Marlo did some stuff that Marlo did not do. And I don't like when people twist the truth. Okay? Candy was on 10. And she has every right to feel how she feels. I ain't telling her how to feel. Right? However, Marlo was on like maybe 5. Candy was on 10. Marlo was on 5. And Drew was on lies. Okay. Um, I feel candy. If you didn't tell me when this stuff happened and then you've been faking and smiling in my face, I don't really want to hear it now. And I really wish that candy would have just said that to her, but candy was just upset. And if you're upset, you're upset, right? But then <laughs> for me, I feel like Marlo was trying to explain herself and explain her rationale. And I think we all can agree that Marlo, Marlo needs to sit down. Marlo needs to let this go. She needs to let it go because you didn't say it when it happened. So no one really is interested in what you're saying now. It really just feels like you're bringing it up for a storyline. 
I do think that Marlo truly feels this way. I do think that Marlo feels like Candy should have done more. I think she really does feel that way. But you never said it when it mattered. So saying it now, because her nephew or her cousin, I think it's Candy's cousin, saying it now because Candy's cousin was now injured and it just feels wrong. It feels like you're trying to start a problem with Candy for the cameras. And I think you are. I think that is what you're trying to do. I think you really feel this way, but it's kind of like delayed. Like you should have said something before and you didn't. So now no one, it is like, I don't blame Candy for being upset. I don't blame Candy for being upset. I don't blame Drew for being upset because Marlo did buck at her when she was leaving. However, and Marlo was wrong for how she addressed Drew. But I do think that when they were having this little exchange, Marlo was a lot calmer. She was trying to get her feelings across. And it's just like I said, nobody cares because it's two years too late. It's two years too late. Is Candy trying to, you know, keep up an image for her businesses because she don't want her businesses to fail? She's invested a lot of money into it. Absolutely. She doesn't want her businesses connected to negative whatevers and crazy incidents. Obviously. She has a right to, you know, protect what's hers. I want to be more upset with Marlo for bringing up something that's two years old and exploiting tragic events, okay? I, I really do. But the reason I cannot be is, like, you guys are going along with it. Kenya's going along with it. Drew's going along with it. Candy's going along with it. Production's going along with it. If this was something that you didn't want to get if you didn't want to make a storyline out of this then you should have shut marlo down marlo me and you are not friends like that i told you sorry i you know sorry for your loss condolences that was it i gave you what i had to give you you're not my friend like that like y'all could have really shut it down but kenya brought it up on the trip to alabama where candy and drew weren't even present you wanted to give it attention then drew you're having conversations about it with your husband you're talking about it with, in a scene with Kenya and Sheree. Y'all wanted to use this as a storyline just as much as Marlo. So it is what it is. Y'all could have shut that shit down real easy. Y'all literally could have shut it down and not give life to it. But y'all all gave life to it. And it's like, oh, Marlo's the bad guy. And it's just kind of like, Marlo irritates me, yes. But no. If you didn't want to breathe life into it, then don't bring life into it. How many times did Drew sit up there and say, oh, I'm from Chicago and you don't use the word shooting, but you say children get killed? Is that better? Y'all know I don't see it first, Drew. Drew's full of shit. I'm so sorry, but Drew is full of shit. Drew, you thought this was... Y'all all jumped on this moment because y'all wanted a moment. If you wanted to shut it down and you didn't want to perpetuate the violence and all this other stuff, then shut it down. Shut the story down. Y'all breathed life into it. She went off on you in, at the winery, but you went and talked about it to Kenya. Kenya admitted to seeing footage of it. Well, we didn't see you recording it, so somehow production showed Kenya footage. Then we see her FaceTime Candy telling Candy about it. There was way too many conversations about this incident. So that lets me know y'all are just as raggedy as Marlo because y'all breathed life into this story. Y'all literally could have said, Candy could have easily said, look, he didn't work for me. I don't really remember him too well. He didn't work for me anymore. I'm sorry for your loss and call it a day. Or just tell Marlo, Marlo, if you had something to say, you should have said it to me at the time. You didn't say it to me at the time. I'm not going to have this discussion with you today. We shot a scene and we talked about it. If production did not include it in the episodes, that's not my fault. I don't know what you want from me. She could have handled Marlo so cut and dry and Marlo would have had no other choice but to drop the issue. But you didn't want her to drop the issue. Y'all wanted, all of y'all were looking for moments. Sorry. I'm not going to sit up here and lie. I didn't appreciate how Drew was like, Marlo is so aggressive. She needs to leave. She needs to leave. The person that was aggressive, I hate to say it, but it was Candy. Candy came in there on 10. Candy was the one making threats. I want to choke you out right now. That's why I'm not crying. Like, Candy was the one being aggressive. Marlo, I can't even say Marlo was matching her energy because Marlo had her hands behind her back. Marlo was clearly talking. 
Y'all literally could have just told her we don't care and shut her down. But y'all wanted to have an exchange and an exchange y'all got. But to really be honest, the aggressive person was Candy. It wasn't Marlo. So for when Sonia was like, you can't say that. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm with Sonia. How did that conversation escalate to that matter? The reason it escalated because Candy was already starting off on 10. And I'm not mad at her for being upset. I don't care that she was on 10. But if we're going to tell the story, let's tell the story the right way. Let's not lie. Let's not say, oh, Marlo was the one that was being dangerous. Because that's not what happened. Let's not tell tales. Candy was the one that was trying to take it to a violent level. And Kenya, you didn't help the matters when you came over there trying to grab her. When someone is in that space, you don't grab them. Because they feel attacked. Like, if I'm arguing with someone and someone puts their hands on me, I'm feeling attacked. I feel suppressed. Now, now I'm really going to act out. So, y'all all contributed to the mess for everybody. This is my thing. Marlo does enough damage to her name all by herself. Y'all don't have to lie. Y'all don't have to say she did stuff she didn't do. Because it makes y'all look ridiculous. At least for me, y'all looked ridiculous. Especially Drew. Drew, you so full of shit. I'm just so ready for her not to be on the show no more. She is annoying. Oh my God, I'm so annoyed by Drew. I can't, I can't with her. I really, really can't. I don't like how they treat her sometimes, but I just cannot. With Drew's full of shit. At the end of the day, like I said in my last video, Marlo is the child that does not feel embraced by the village and she will burn it down to feel its warmth. That is Marlo every day, all day. Marlo has never felt accepted in this environment. She hasn't. She's been wanting to feel accepted since season four. And she never got over the fact that Candy exposed, you know, the rumors that she was an escort, that she slept with old white men for money. Marlo never got over that because that reputation has followed her 10, 11 years later. Marlo never got over it. That's the sad part about Marlo's, um, how she moves. That's Marlo's MO. Like she'll argue with you, get in the gutter with you, and then want to be your friend the next day. That is Marlo's pattern. It's been her pattern since season four. Um, at this point of the game, Candy, you know this. Most of the ladies there know it. So at this point, it is what it is. I don't feel bad for Candy in this moment because like I said, Candy could have shut her down. Candy could have literally shut her down and said, girl, bye. Um, you didn't want to shut her down. You wanted to have this moment. <laughs> and in all honesty for Marlo, I'm going to really need Marlo to stop seeking their attention and their affection and their acceptance. I'm going to need her to just not care no more. Roll with the people that want to roll with you and call it a day. I also, I'm going to need Marlo to address. This is what I'm going to need from Marlo. I'm going to need Marlo to get over the fact that these girls don't really like you like that. I'm going to need her to address exactly what it is that happened. Did you slice one person's face or did you slice several people's faces? We need to know that. And I also need Marlo to accept that some of these girls are not your friends. And it's just what it is. And you can long and want it all you want to. You can be the nicest that you can be. You can know all the kids' names. You can give them gifts. You could do all of the things. If they don't fool with you, they don't fool with you. I'm going to need her to accept that. And then I'm going to also need her to stop trying to recreate moments that she's seen in the past. Because this was Portia and Nene all over again. When Nene was like, you are a bad friend. That's what this was. We tired of it. I really do think that Sonia and Marlo, they could really be really good friends. Like, she's good with Sheree. I think Sheree understands her and knows how to work with her. And Sonia seems to kind of get her, too. Those two are your friends. Maybe Courtney will be your friend. I, I don't know. Maybe Courtney might be your friend. You need to just let the dream die. Candy and Kenya don't want nothing to do with you. When they say something slick to you, you say something slick back. But having this desire to be their friends, you got to let that go.
I will not sit up here and tell y'all no lies. Marlo is full of it. She is definitely full of it because all this, I want Candy to be held accountable. Candy gets to come on here and do X, Y, and Z, and she gets away with all these things. That is all true. Everything Marlo is saying is honest to God. It's the truth. It's no lie to what she's saying. The problem is you contributed to that as well. You did. You contributed to all of that. When the incident happened with your nephew, you didn't get mad at Candy because you wanted to be in Candy's good graces. Just like how Drew wants to stay in Candy's good graces. Just like you're saying everybody's kissing her ass, you was kissing her ass too. And with Candy, I can't feel bad for Candy because Candy, you have rewarded Marlo's bad behavior in the past. When Marlo got into it with Nene and Marlo wasn't on the show for a couple of seasons, Weren't you behind the scenes trying to get her her own show? When Marlo was chasing Portia around Eva's birthday party, you weren't laughing about that? You weren't happy about that? When y'all were in Spain and she snatched that fan out of Portia's hand and they was almost about to fight, you didn't go up to Marlo rubbing her back and telling her, girl, you know, let's get out of here. I don't want you to get arrested because I don't know how to bail you out. You didn't reward her behavior. You didn't go to her taping of Watch What Happens Live to support her because she was coming at Portia crazy. You have rewarded Marlo's bad behavior in the past. And that is why, again, like I said, I don't feel bad for nobody in this whole situation i don't feel bad for none of y'all because all of y'all are full of shit everything that y'all are complaining about each other y'all have all done to one another who's the victim here nobody <laughs> like kenya you did the same thing you saw marlo and nini having an issue and you brought her around the film when you wanted to expose the whole bolo situation you use her to help you do it. So at this point, y'all stuck with each other. Like I said the last time, y'all stuck with each other. Because everybody knows if Portia was on the show, Marlo would be on her back about the Simon thing and y'all would be eating it up. But Portia not here. So she coming for y'all. I'm just gonna watch the show. <laughs> I'm just gonna watch the show because it's just like... Y'all rewarded Marlo's behavior in the past. Marlo has been complicit with the things that you guys have done to others in the past. So it is what it is. It is what it is. Like, I don't, I don't feel no kind of way. But anyways, that's really all that I have to say about this episode. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.